Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Lydia and this is Time with Lydia, the pharmacist. Today I'm going to be spending some time with you talking about contact dermatitis. And we are going to be looking at some of the symptoms of contact dermatitis. We'll also be looking at ways of diagnosing this condition and how it is treated, as well as some self-help tips that you can carry out to prevent this condition. This is a channel where we educate ourselves on common health problems. So if you're new to this channel, I would really be glad if you hit on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell. So you will be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what is contact dermatitis? First of all, let's describe what dermatitis is. Dermatitis is a type of inflammation of the skin, and it is also known as eczema. Contact dermatitis, which is also known as contact eczema, is a term used when this inflammation is caused by direct or indirect skin contact with something in a person's environment, and this results in a red, itchy rash. The rash isn't contagious or life-threatening, but it can be very uncomfortable. Contact dermatitis occurs when you're exposed to substances that irritate your skin or triggers an allergic reaction. The substances could be one of thousands of known allergens and irritants. And some of these substances may cause both irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis. Now let's look at the difference between irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis. Irritant contact dermatitis is the most common type and it is a non-allergic skin reaction that occurs when a substance damages your skin's outer protective layer. These substances strip the skin off as natural oils. Some people react to strong irritants after a single exposure. Others may develop signs and symptoms after repeated exposure to even mild irritants. This occurs quite commonly in people who wash their hands a lot. Example, bartenders, healthcare workers, and hairdressers. And some people develop a tolerance to the substance over time. Common irritants include solvents, rubbing alcohol, bleach, and detergents, shampoos, some airborne substances such as sawdust or wool dust, plants, fertilizers, and pesticides. Allergic contact dermatitis occurs when a substance to which you're sensitive to triggers an immune reaction in your skin. It usually affects only the area that came into contact with the allergen, but it may be triggered by something that enters your skin through foods, flavorings, medicine or medical or dental procedures. You may become sensitized to strong allergens after a single exposure. Weaker allergens may require multiple exposures over several years to trigger an allergy. Once you develop an allergy to a substance, even a small amount of it can cause a reaction. Common allergens include nickel, which is used in jewelry, buckles, and many other items. Medications such as antibiotic creams, balsam of Peru, which is used in many products such as perfumes, cosmetics, mouthwashes, and flavorings. And then formaldehyde, which is a preservative, some disinfectants, and some fabrics. Personal care products such as deodorants, body washes, hair dyes, and nail polish. Plants, such as poison ivy and mango, and also some insecticides. Children also develop this condition from the usual allergens that I have mentioned, as well as from exposure to diapers, baby wipes, sunscreen, and clothing. Now let's answer this question. Is contact dermatitis hereditary? People with a tendency to asthma, eczema, and hay fever develop irritant contact dermatitis more easily than others. And this tendency runs in families. Allergic contact dermatitis 
is not normally hereditary. Now let's move on to the factors that can put you at risk of developing contact dermatitis. Some jobs and hobbies put you at higher risk of contact dermatitis. And examples include healthcare and dental employees, metal workers, construction workers, hairdressers, and cosmetologists, auto mechanics, scuba divers, or swimmers due to the rubber in face masks or goggles, cleaners, gardeners, and agricultural workers, cooks, and others who work with food. So what does contact dermatitis look like? The hands are the commonest area on which contact dermatitis develops, followed by the arms, neck, and face. After contact with the irritant or allergenic substance, Itching of the skin is the commonest symptom, and this can be intense. The skin may become red, bumpy, blistered, and scaly as well. And sometimes too, there can be dryness. Now let's look at how contact dermatitis is diagnosed. Your doctor may be able to diagnose contact dermatitis and identify its cause by talking to you about your signs and symptoms questioning you to uncover clues about the trigger substance, and they would examine your skin to note the pattern and intensity of your rash. Your doctor may recommend a patch test to find out if you are allergic to something. And this test can be useful if the cause of your rash is not apparent or if your rash occurs often. During a patch test, Small amounts of potential allergens are applied to adhesive patches, which are then applied to your skin. The patches remain on your skin for two to three days, during which time you would need to keep your back dry. Your doctor then checks for skin reactions under the patches and determines whether further testing is needed. Once it is established that you are allergic to a particular substance, the necessary care would be administered. But you know, there are some lifestyle and home remedies that you can carry out to reduce itching and soothe inflamed skin. And these include one, avoid the irritant or allergen. The key to this is identifying what's causing your rash and staying away from it. Your doctor may give you a list of products that typically contain the substance that affects you. If you're allergic, to a metal in a piece of jewelry, you may be able to wear it by putting a barrier between you and the metal. For example, line the inside of a bracelet with a piece of clear tape or paint it with clear nail polish. Number two, apply an anti-itch cream or lotion to the affected area. A non-prescription cream containing at least 1% hydrocortisone can give you temporary relief from the itch. A steroid ointment may be applied one or two times a day for two to four weeks. You can also try calamine lotion as it can soothe your skin. Number three, apply a cool wet compress. And what you need to do is moisten a soft washcloth and hold it against the rash to soothe your skin for 15 to 30 minutes and repeat this several times a day. Number four, avoid scratching. And this is very essential because if you scratch continuously, you can develop an infection. Trim your nails. And if you can't keep from scratching an itchy area, then cover it with a dressing. Number five, soak in a comfortable cool bath. Sprinkle the water with baking soda or an oatmeal-based bath product. Number six, protect your hands. Rinse and dry your hands well and gently after washing. Use moisturizers throughout the day and choose gloves based on what you're protecting your hands from. For example, plastic gloves lined with cotton are good if your hands are often wet. If these lifestyle changes and home remedies are not helping ease your signs and symptoms, then your doctor may prescribe some medications. Steroid creams or ointments and in this case, stronger steroid creams can be prescribed. These topically applied creams or ointments help soothe the rash 
of contact dermatitis. A topical steroid cream may be applied one or two times a day for two to four weeks. In severe cases, your doctor may prescribe oral corticosteroids to reduce inflammation, antihistamines to relieve itching, or antibiotics to fight a bacterial infection. Also make sure you make an appointment with your doctor. If the rash is so uncomfortable that you're losing sleep, or are distracted from your daily activities. If the rash appears suddenly, as painful, as severe, or widespread. If you are embarrassed by the way your skin looks and the rash doesn't get better within three weeks. If the rash affects your face or genitals, it will be essential to seek immediate medical attention. If you think your skin is infected, if there is an infection, you would feel feverish and there will be pus coming from the blisters. Also, if your lungs, your eyes, or nasal passages are painful and inflamed, perhaps from inhaling an allergen. And also, if you think the rash has damaged the mucous lining of your mouth and digestive tract. I always like to spend some time talking about preventive measures because as the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. So let's talk about a few preventive steps. Avoid irritants and allergens. Try to identify and avoid substances that irritate your skin or cause an allergic reaction. If you cannot avoid contact, you can take steps to reduce the risk of the allergens or irritants causing symptoms. Secondly, wash your skin. You might be able to remove most of the rash causing substance if you wash your skin right away after coming into contact with it. Use a mild fragrance free soap and warm water. Rinse completely, then apply an emollient as soon as possible. Thirdly, change products that irritate your skin. Check the ingredients in makeup or soap and make sure it does not contain any irritants or allergens. The next protective step, wear protective clothing or gloves, face masks, goggles, gloves, and other protective items can shield you from irritating substances, including household cleaners. Also, if you are allergic to some metals, you can apply an iron-on patch to cover metal fastness next to your skin. This can help you avoid a reaction to gene snaps, for example. Also apply a barrier cream or gel. These products can provide a protective layer for your skin. For example, an over-the-counter skin cream containing an ivy block may prevent or lessen your skin's reaction to poison ivy. Finally, use a moisturizer. Regularly applying a moisturizing lotion or cream can help restore your skin's outermost layer and keep your skin soft and beautiful. I hope you have learned something today. Please give this video a thumbs up, share with family and friends, and leave your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to hit on that subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. Thank you so much and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.